Hello everyone, my name is Bob and I have been on the Mac for 30 years and I've been in IT supporting Apple and the Mac in enterprise and education for 25 years. Uh, the company that I currently work for has about 90 people and in 2022 uh, they replaced half of their fleet um, with M1 uh, 13-inch MacBook Pros which seems to have worked out really well. We're now in the process of evaluating what we want to do to replace the second half of our fleet. And as I record this, which is in May of 2023, uh, the two computers that we're looking to go with are a base model uh, MacBook Air um, 8256 and a 13 inch MacBook Pro, similar to what we have just as an M2. Um, there's a lot of factors that are going into this decision. And I think these are the same factors that a lot of people are doing a lot of hand wringing on in terms of, you know, what do I get? Do I pay for a memory upgrade? Do I pay for a hard drive upgrade? Is the base model good enough? And I see a lot of stuff out there that says that, you know, don't buy the base model MacBook Air. Um, you're going to regret it, those kinds of things. And so for me, I needed to settle in my mind, you know, what we needed to get. Um, was eight gigs going to be good enough? Um, did we need to go uh, from an Air, which is what we're looking at, to the Pro just because it has that fan in it? Um, and then another factor here is if we go with 8 gigs of RAM, is that with the uh, M2 models, whether it's, it's the Air and the 13-inch MacBook Pro or the 14-inch, 16-inch um, 512s, Apple has moved to a single chip um, SSD for those instead of the dual chip that it had before and tests have shown that those SSDs are running upwards of half as fast for reads and writes so if you're gonna have an 8 gig system that clearly is gonna re rely on the hard drive more if the performance of that hard drive is compromised in some way that could that could have an effect on the performance of the computers themselves so I really wrestled with this. I had a talk with an Apple rep, and surprisingly the Apple rep said, hey, if, if you're struggling that much with what to get, we can give you a couple loaners. So Apple was kind enough to uh, let me try out for a couple weeks a base model 13-inch uh, MacBook Air, uh, M2 MacBook Air, and an M2 13-inch uh, MacBook Pro. So really what this is gonna be about is testing these two together under the exact same circumstances, kind of to see if eight gigs is good enough and see if that hard drive is gonna affect the performance at all, but then also to see if that the, the fan, which is really the only thing the 13-inch MacBook Pro has going for it over the air, um, if that makes any difference whatsoever. Unfortunately, you know, I think that the Air is a fantastic computer. In the two weeks that I had it, I really dread having to give it up. It's, it's fantastic, it's light, it's thin. A lot of our people travel. I think they're really gonna like the Air. Um, unfortunately, the MacBook Pro didn't get any kind of um, hardware upgrade other than going to an M2. So I feel like it's starting to get to be a little um, old. It's still, it's the last computer that has a touch bar in it, which I don't use. I've never liked it. I don't know anybody who uses the touch bar. And so the only thing that the Pro has going for it is that it has a fan. So I want to see if that has any effect whatsoever. Now, I also want to caution you that this is a very specific use case. I am not going to run any benchmarks. I do not want to see numbers. I don't want to artificially influence you know, my feelings on this or your feelings on this. I want to see real world performance of these two systems. And um, we're also not doing design work. We do have designers. They have, you know, 14 inch MacBook Pros that are, that are well equipped. Um, what our people, the people who, who would be getting these are doing um, they, they're doing like basic office tasks that you would, that anybody in any office would be doing right now. So that includes the full Microsoft suite. It's Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook. They're on Teams meetings all day. The occasional Zoom meeting. Um, they're typically in Chrome with sometimes 20 plus tabs running. Even if you just did that, it's going to crush, you know, the performance of the computer. 
But this is how people are working in our office, and I'm assuming most offices, every single day. It's how I work. Um, and so this is a very specific use case. This We're not running any Adobe stuff on these Macs. Um, you know, they do occasionally run like Acrobat Pro to edit PDFs, but that's about the extent of it. They're not running Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign. They're not doing any of that kind of stuff. And so, it, it, you know, this is, that, this is the non-designer use case for these base model computers. Um, and so, you know, I see people out there who are like, you know, I uh, am a programmer, I'm a web designer, um, you know, those kinds of things. Again, if you're just occasionally editing some video in, in uh, iMovie or Final Cut Pro, I think that still would maybe fall under this umbrella. If you're occasionally dipping into Photoshop to edit something, I think that would maybe fall under this as well. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna like basically hammer both of these Macs as much as I can. And, and the actual tests are gonna go pretty quick. I, I know I'm talking a lot here up front to kind of set it up, but the actual tests themselves are gonna go really quick. I basically tested both computers simultaneously with one external monitor attached, um, which are 24 inch um, uh, 1080p monitors. Um, they all are running um, the full uh, Microsoft suite. So um, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, um, Teams, uh, Chrome, and Safari. Um, to start, uh, Chrome is gonna have 20 tabs open and all 20 of those tabs are just at the home page for YouTube. And then we're gonna start with one video playing in YouTube. Um, as we go along throughout the day, I'm going to add another YouTube video playing. Um, each hour, I'm going to add another YouTube playing in a tab. And then we're going to culminate all of this with a Zoom call at the end to, to really stress it toward the end of the day to see you know, if that impacts performance at all. So having set all that up, having talked way too much, this is what the tests are. I'm about to show you these tests, and then you can make up your own mind if you think that the base model systems will be good enough for your situation. Thank you. Here we have the MacBook Air, and as you can see, we have 20 tabs open in Chrome, and we have the full Microsoft Office suite as well as Safari and Zoom. This is the MacBook Pro, and again, we have 20 tabs open in Chrome. We have the full Microsoft Office suite, as well as Zoom and Safari open here as well. At this point, the MacBook Air has been running for over six hours. We are currently running uh, six YouTube videos concurrently. As you can see over here, we're still running our full Microsoft Office suite. And there is some memory pressure here, but I have not seen any hint of the system slowing down, getting bogged down, uh, video stuttering. Um, and as you can see, there's, you know, everything looks perfectly normal here um, without any issues whatsoever. Here we're at the MacBook Pro, and just like the MacBook Air, um, we're running six concurrent videos. Um, everything has been running all day for over six hours. And just like the Air, I haven't seen any stuttering, um, haven't seen any slowdowns. Again, we're seeing the same almost exact memory pressure here that we saw over with the Air. Um, they're virtually identical systems, and from what I can see, there hasn't been any difference in the fact that the MacBook Air has a fan in it and the Air doesn't. They are behaving exactly the same at this point. So we're back at the MacBook Air, um, and I've now I'm kind of ramping up uh, the pressure on this thing. Um, we're still running our six YouTube videos. We're still running all the software, but on top of that, I am running a live uh, Zoom meeting on this as well. This is where I really expected it to maybe start bogging down to to be playing, uh, you know, running a, a you know a Zoom meeting um, at the same time. But as you can see, 
the memory pressure is ever so slightly higher than it was before I was running the Zoom meeting. So, you know, at this point, it's it's still stressed. I'm still stressing it, and I'm not really seeing it bogged down at this point. Back at the MacBook Pro, again, virtually identical to what we're seeing with the MacBook Air. Uh, memory pressure is slightly higher than it was before I did the Zoom meeting. Uh, but again, this laptop is running six concurrent YouTube videos, uh, full Microsoft Office suite, and it's now doing the Zoom meeting. And again, I really do not see a difference in performance between the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air. Um, and so the, the Pro having that fan in it really has not seemed to make a difference throughout, uh, at this point, over six hours of testing. Here we are back at the Air. And just to throw one last thing in it, um, I am in um, Apple Maps and, you know, I'm, as you can see, I'm moving around effortlessly. It's zooming fine. It's scrolling fine. Um, you know, I thought maybe I'd get a little bit of a stutter here. Uh, and we are still running that Zoom meeting in the background um, while I'm doing this. So it's still running the six YouTube videos, the Zoom video, um, and I was just moving around in Apple Maps. Same as the MacBook Air, we're now on the Pro. I'm in Apple Maps, and as you can see, I'm scrolling around just fine. Um, zooming is, is just fine. Uh, we're still running our Zoom meeting, our six YouTube videos. Um, as you can see, everything looks you know completely normal. You would never know I had all of this running on this laptop at this point. Uh, but again, um, it doesn't really seem to have impacted having this uh, fan in the Pro really does not seem to have helped uh, the performance of this laptop. So there you have it. Um, we ran these computers for over seven hours. Um, the battery was starting, was under 10%. Uh, at that point, I ran them basically as long as I could. So they ran for over seven hours like this, and you saw the results there. Um, there. There was absolutely no difference that I could ascertain really between the Air and the Pro. Um, maybe I saw a little bit less memory pressure with the Pro, but nothing that would indicate that it ran significantly better than the Air did. Um, based on, the, on these tests, I would say, unless you're just hammering a, the 13 inch Pro with video editing, um, doing a lot of Photoshopping or whatnot in, in really big multi-gig files, um, that there's just no point to going to the 13 inch MacBook Pro. And frankly, if you're doing that much work on the Pro, you probably do need to step up to a larger hard drive and more RAM. And as I record this in the spring of 2023, um, Apple has been practically giving away the M1 14 inch MacBook Pros, which are 16 512s. And those are going for a little over $1,500. And they are gonna obliterate the 13 inch MacBook Pro. As a matter of fact, as I record this, they've got refurbs of uh, the M2 14 inch MacBook Pros uh, for $1,700, 300 bucks off of, of normal cost for those. So why you would ever go with the 13 inch MacBook Pro, it just doesn't make sense to do it anymore, if it ever did. Um, but what these tests really showed, we really kind of crushed both of these computers, or at least I felt like we did. We were running multiple apps at the same time. Um, by the end of the test, we were running six YouTube videos simultaneously and then ended that with a Zoom call. And as you saw, nothing ever faltered. I maybe was starting to see just the slightest bit of stuttering um, in a couple of the YouTube videos on the air, 
Uh, but that air was also running on Wi-Fi, and I also was running between the two computers. I was running 12 video streams, so it could have also been a network issue um, as well. But it held up. Both computers held up on a base model, it, far exceeding what the average person would ever do. I mean, we, again, full Microsoft Office suite, uh, doing a Zoom video call, 20 tabs open, six simultaneous YouTube videos playing. Um, and the air, by the way, was was pretty much like uh, room temperature to the touch. Like I purposely touched the bottom of it and you would, it was maybe a degree or two warmer. Like it just did not feel, you could tell it had been running that it was on, but it was, it was virtually uh, just slightly warmer than, than, you know, the temperature of the rest of the laptop. Um, so in my opinion, that, that sold me. I was like, when you look at uh, that, these things are light, thin, beautiful, beautiful computers. Um, I think our people are really going to like it. And then just what I felt was torturing these computers in a non-design way, doing, you know, the types of tasks any non-designer would do. To me, these tests showed that the base configuration does work. Um, I didn't see that the the hard drive issue really affected anything. It would be kind of nice to have gotten um, maybe a 512 hard drive uh, where that performance isn't being hampered to see if it, if it helped anything at all. But I was like, I don't know how anybody would be doing more than what I did on these tests on their computer day in and day out. And this was running, by the way, for over seven hours. So it isn't like I ran this for a few minutes or an hour, and it's like, oh, well, let's see, you know, over time if that starts affecting things. We ran it for over seven hours, basically as long as the battery lasted, running all of that stuff, and it just never, you know, whimpered. It never really gave up. I think I would have had to go with more videos or, or just crush it even more to get it to do it. So hopefully, this puts the rest for if, if you a, are a non-designer, if you're doing anything other than video work and Adobe stuff, right there, um, or, or it's very occasional video editing, light video editing, light you know Adobe stuff, I, hopefully this will put your mind to rest that I think you're fine getting the base model Mac. Um, and for us, this was a big deal because we have 45 of these to replace, 48 of these to replace. So getting that memory upgrade was going to cost us over $9,000. So this wasn't trivial to, to just, you know, every fiber of my being, having been on Intel for, you know, however long we've been on Intel, you, like, having 16 gigs was a no-brainer. You just have to do it. Um, you know, I think there's a feeling in myself and I think other people feel that these M series Macs, eight gigs performs like 16 gigs did on an Intel system. And, you know, again, you can make your own judgment. You can look at these results. You can look at the kind of work that you do and say, I'm never going to do as much as we did in these tests. And so, you know, my mind's at rest that, that the base model is going to work. So hopefully that you know, that settles it in some people's minds. It certainly settled in mine. I was able to go to leadership and say, these MacBook Airs are what we need to move to. They're going to be fine. We're going to do fine. They're going to last us the next three or four years till, till we have another upgrade cycle. So hopefully you found value in it. I put a lot of time and effort into this. Um, and I thank you very much for watching the video. Bye.